How does UFC ranking system work? The UFC ranking system is relatively new and first introduced in 2013. It plays some role when determining a fighter's next opponent, their place in the upcoming fight card, and a fighter's new contract terms. Before the system was implemented, it looked like that the UFC simply set the matchups. Still, the main criteria were to separate the fighters by their winning and losing streaks, their achievements and performance, and of course, their name value. At the moment, UFC has eight men's divisions with 15 ranked fighters in each and four women's divisions with 15 fighters each. They also have a pound-for-pound -pound rankings both for men and women. Originally, in each division rankings, there were 10 spots, but it was increased to 15. Members cannot vote for undisputed or interim champions, as they are always at the top of their represented divisions. Over time, there were also other changes introduced. For example, fighters could originally not be ranked in more than one division. After the women's division was created, the men and women were ranked together in the pound-for-pound -pound ranking. Now, they are in separated pound-for-pound -pound rankings. Who decides the fighter's ranking? The panel consists of 22 media members who set the ranking after each event. Originally, there were 14 members. UFC did handle recruiting directly and via an application form on their website. From the moment of the rankings implementation in 2013, questions and controversies around it are raised. Whether the members have the necessary qualifications for voting, what is the level of transparency, and if UFC influenced the voting process at any level. All the votes from the panel are collected by the third party who is led by Kirik Jenis. The main goal is to keep the panel separated from the UFC. How the members evaluate the fighter rankings There are two main strategies for how the panelists rank the fighters. 1. Rank fighter based on who is better. They rank fighters in a way that the top ranked would beat all lower ranked fighters most of the time. If it's believed that the loss was unjustified or unlikely to happen again, then a fighter who lost might be ranked higher than the fighter who beat him. 2. Rank fighters based on who deserves a title shot the most. In this case, victory over another fighter will rank you higher since it will be getting you closer to the title shot. Members of the panel also tend to take the last five fights of the fighter on an added emphasis to their last three fights. This does not provide an accurate representation of the real situation, as those five fights could be stretched over several years and the MMA world is developing fast. Some in their decision making favor recent results over the fighter's legacy. There are other factors that are considered when deciding fighters' rankings. Quality of opponents, the way of victory, fighters' reputation. In brief, since there are many variables, the ranking cannot be 100% accurate all the time. The ranking system of MMA itself could not be perfect, since a fighter does not compete the same amount of time per year as their opponent, and matchups are not always set based on the rankings, meaning a 10th place fighter faces a 9th place fighter, and so on. This complicates the ranking process. Another thing that makes confusion is that well-known fighters take long breaks from the fight game. For example, Conor McGregor three times announced retirement from the sport, but still was found in the rankings. At the same time, Henry Cejudo was removed from the ranking right after his announcement. Right now, the panel does not have set guidelines when to include or exclude the fighters from the rankings due to his or her long absence from the octagon. Why people want to stay in the panel and rank fighters, knowing that the odds are against them? The members of the panel do not get any compensation for their participation. One of their main goals is to provide their educated view. By leaving the panel, they risk that less skilled or less qualified persons would take their place. Criticism that comes from MMA fighters or the fans is not backed by certain adjustments that must be done or things that must be improved. However, there are some legitimate suggestions that possibly would bring a better result. 
taking ranking percentage index. This is used in college football. Creating a more diverse panel. Removing members from the panel whose ranking are consistently different from the majority. Increasing the size of the panel, thus decreasing the influence that outliers have. Adding a fan element, which comes with a downside. Why are rankings important? For the fighters, the rankings are important and they pay a big amount of attention to it. Fighters are looking at a higher ranked opponent who gives them a chance to increase their position in the rankings and thus possibly getting them a better pay and better opportunities in the future. The downside is that higher ranked fighters don't like to fight lower ranked opponents as it does not provide any benefit to them. The way around it is to challenge not ranked but well-known fighters. A win in this situation could pave a road to the ranked position. When fighters or their management negotiate for their upcoming matchups, the UFC could use rankings in a way to justify whether or not the fighter getting the desired opponent, or even justify their earnings for the next fight. For the MMA fans, the rankings help them understand the general idea and a way around the current situation in divisions. Still, the rankings are not perfect and often cause more questions than they provide answers. Until the moment when a better and clearer system will be created and implemented, we'll have the same questions and problems arise.